Welcome to the Campbell County Backroads Farm Tour, where we will take you on an adventure around Campbell County, showcasing everything from a log cabin museum, to wineries, to good old-fashioned produce farms. Our first stop is Misty Ridge Farm in Camp Springs. Misty Ridge Farm is a unique riding stable farm and a place to go for people who love animals, especially horses. Here you will be able to see a variety of horse breeds, along with other types of farm animals. This is Misty Ridge Farm and we uh, do full care boarding here and we're a training and lesson facility here in Campbell County and we opened this barn in 1996 in December of 96 so that the general public could have a recreational barn to come and enjoy horses not just for show but for recreation and what they do for the inside of the soul. This is Amish Mule. She just came to the farm. She's going to be a new less an animal and I'm um, going to use her for packing. I like to trail ride and pack and we've been in training on how to load a pack and she's going to be our first animal to do it ourselves. So, this is Rosie. Hot Rosie. What a girl. You're a big girl. So she's got the scars from working with the Amish for the collar. And all things, she's only 16 but she was getting too slow for them, so she'll be perfect for people to learn how to ride and have a steady, relaxing, um, confident trail ride. So, that's crazy. He was retired at a young age from uh, Keeneland. He raced at Keeneland. He didn't win a race. He had several um, seconds and thirds. So he was retired into, um, into a program called New Vocations where they re, um, retrain animals for a second career. And he's a three-day event horse now. He's doing fantastic. This is the great catch. And I guess Rosie liked being on film. <laughs> Put that. <laughs> so. This is a saddle bread. Uh, she'll be shown. She was shown just last weekend at Franklin County Fair. First time. She's young. First show. She's a natural pleasure on the saddle bread. And she'll be at the Alexandria Fair this year. She drives and rides country pleasure. You say, Abby? She's owner owned and trained. So a lot of people here are learning to do it themselves and they get to do it in a really relaxed area. It's a saddlebred. The other barn has Tennessee walkers, another thoroughbred, and um, ponies. So we've got everything covered here. If there's any breed you'd like to find out about, sometimes we'll have Rocky Mountains. Um, we've had um, we call them Icelandic ponies, so we've trained and helped for handicap riding schools and things like that. So, Our next stop is Neltner's Farm and Greenhouse. Neltner's Farm is a commercial fruit and vegetable farm located on Four Mile Road in Camp Springs. Kevin Neltner here at uh, Neltner Farm. Uh, we do a vegetable uh, business all summer long, sell vegetables right here on the farm, also at the local farmer markets. In October, we uh, do the Neltner's Fall Fest. We have a lot of activities going on. It's a real festival deal. We got the music, uh, crafters, pony rides, uh, wagon rides, the pumpkin patch, pick your own pumpkins, and a lot, of, a lot of stuff for the kids to do and get the family out to enjoy the weather. Stop number three is just down the road from Neltner's on Four Mile. Camp Springs Vineyard and Winery shows us some of the winemaking machines and processes. Uh, 
Hello, uh, my name is Chris Sensweiler. Um, this is Camp Springs Vineyard Winery. Uh, it's an operation um, my brother and I and my dad uh, started a few years ago. Uh, we've got about three and a half acres of grapes here. Uh, Vidal Blanc, uh, Cabernet Franc are two of them we grow. Um, the basement of our, our building here has the, uh, the winery part. Um, where we're standing out here is our, what we call our crush pad, and that's where the grapes come in the day we pick and uh, crush the stem and um, press and all that. Um, today's a day of the farm tour. The weather's not the best in the world, but people are coming out and enjoying themselves, so. Growing grapes and making wine is what our next stop is known for. Located on Vineyard Lane in Camp Springs is Stonebrook Winery. This is our production facility for Stonebrook Winery. Uh, this is where we make the wine. Uh, we've uh, actually started making the wine at our tasting room, which is a tenth of a mile up the road, but quickly found out we ran out of room, so when we built this facility, we built it between our two vineyards. Uh, we have a vineyard in the front and in the back uh, of this uh, production facility so that it makes it convenient for us when we're uh, harvesting grapes. And what we do here is we bring our grapes in, we weigh them because we have to keep data on uh, how much product that we've actually produced uh, for our reporting uh, processes that we have to do with the uh, federal government. So we weigh our grapes, we put them in our crusher to stemmer, which is right here to my left, and that takes the uh, grapes and uh, takes the stem off uh, and crushes the grapes into a must, which goes into a pump in the bottom of the machine, which we then pump to our uh, press and uh, that's a hydraulic press that uses water pressure and a bladder uh, and as that bladder expands it pushes the uh, juice out of the grapes into the basin and we have a collection vessel that sets uh, underneath that basin and when it's full we pump into our stainless steel tanks in our cold room uh, so that we can cool our juice down uh, on the grape wines and um, which helps us uh, make a really good quality wine. Once we got them cooled down, we introduce our uh, strain of yeast that we want to get a particular flavor or mouthfeel for the wine into it. Uh, they ferment in there for about oh, 60 days. Uh, they're usually done fermenting in that amount of time. At that point in time, after the fermentation process is complete, we start filtering our wines. We actually filter our wines three times. We do a coarse filter to get them off the lees and uh, all the trash that uh, came in from pick. We then do a uh, intermediate filtration which helps remove the yeast cells, the dead yeast cells that are uh, collected from the fermentation process. And then when we finally bottle, we do a sterile filterization which strips out everything that could be in that wine, um, including all the yeast cells. And, and from that point on, uh, once they're sterile filtered into our bottling tank, which is to my right, we go ahead and uh, bottle. We have a six spot, uh, six spout bottle filler, and that fills the bottles to exactly uh, 750 ml. Uh, and from there, they're handed off to a pneumatic corking machine, which is uh, semi-automatic. We have an operator who pushes a foot switch and the machine corks the bottle and then it is handed off to a person who puts the caps on the bottle and then heat shrink the, uh, uh, the caps onto the bottle. Uh, that process probably, uh, we normally run anywhere from 50 to 75 cases an hour uh, with a crew uh, and so um, you know it does, a, it does a job for us and it's economical for a small winery to do it that way. Uh, we could buy a piece of machinery, which is called a monoblock, for eighty or ninety thousand dollars. But uh, we have enough family and friends who help us that uh, we can do it quite nicely, uh, kind of semi, semi manually. Uh, and from there, we're cased goods. Uh, we case our wines, and then uh, we take the uh, labeler, which is also a kind of semi-automatic. Uh, the operator has to put the bottle on and take the bottle off, but it does label it as it's placed on the machine. And that machine probably runs around 28 to 32 cases an hour, depending on the speed of the operator. And from there, we uh, warehouse our cases, and uh, 
as our orders come in, we ship them out and take them to the tasting room. Uh, and, uh, and that is our process of making the wine here at Stonebrook. Our fifth stop is Little Rock Farm, which is a commercial vegetable production and beef cattle farm located on Ten Mile Road. Um, this is Little Rock Farm. And um, here at Little Rock Farm, we raise uh, seasonal produce, different kinds of vegetables, tomatoes and eggplants, peppers, all that kind of stuff. Um, we also do um, freezer beef, um, which is all raised here on the farm. Um, there's no antibiotics, no hormones. Um, it's all USDA inspected. People can come here and just buy a pound of burger if they want. They can buy steaks or roast, whatever, or they can order halves and quarters. Um, what else do we do? We do baked goods, jams and jellies, and uh, we do zucchini breads, all that kind of stuff, um, with all the stuff that we've raised here on the farm. So we try to do value-added um, products as well as the fresh products is, um, that we sell. We're also working on expanding our berry production. Um, that's our current thing that we're kind of trying to do. Um, and that's uh, pretty much what we do here at Little Rock Farm. Saddle Lake Equestrian Center is a premier horse facility that specializes in breeding, showing, and training horses and riders. It is also home to world champion horse Sonny's Hot Jazz at stop number six on our tour. Welcome to Saddle Lake Equestrian Center. Here we have a full service training facility. We do um, stallion breeding services, horse training, lessons, and showing. Horses here are bred, raised, and trained. So it's a very full service from beginning to end process. We also coach the um, University of Cincinnati Equestrian Team, so which is just a ton of fun. There's about 60 members that come over and ride weekly. We have three locations. The first location is Saddle Lake on Nelson Road in Camp Springs, Kentucky. It's where all the training happens and lessons. We have another small farm in the county that's used as the prospect farm so that horses can stay with their own age groups and be raised. So the yearlings will stay together in a yearling herd and the two-year-olds before they're trained they can, you know, be horses and hang out and have a great life. We have another farm that is rented and run by Smith's Genetics Farm in Walton, Kentucky that we use for all of the broodmare um, housing. So it's a, it's a very full service kind of um, atmosphere. We have a lot of customers from all over the country and we even have some customers from outside of the country. We stand a three-time world champion stallion, Sonny's Hot Jazz. He is eligible for all the Kentucky incentive programs and we also ship um, we ship around the country for breeding services also. On site here at the facility we are open for um, internships from different colleges and we also have a full service tax store. So it's very um, uh, from the beginning to the end I guess kind of in inclusive. Okay, thank you. Drive south down the AA highway and you will come across Clearview Ridge Farm. With a variety of livestock, including chickens, goats, and horses, this farm's primary enterprise is beef production. Uh, this is Clearview Ridge Farm, California, Kentucky, a uh, property of Anita and Ron McCormick. Uh, I am James Wilbers, the uh, son of Anita and Ron. Uh, we also live here on the farm. This is a uh, cow-calf farm operation. 
We have Angus Hereford cows uh, as the main uh, breeding stock there. We breed with a Gelby bull, uh, which is uh, known for its size uh, in, in the breeding process. We keep around 40 to 60 head of cattle at any given time on the farm. Uh, we have several parts of that operation. Some have to do with uh, the, the, the breeding and selling of young calves. And then the second part of that operation is taking, uh, are going to the going to the market, buying the younger, uh, four, like say 400 pound calves, bringing them back to the farm, raising them, uh, feeding them on grass and grain to get them back up to market weight. Um, we also have a, a small goat operation. We currently, we have about 10 goats. Uh, that's a product of, of the kids. They like to work on that. We also have a small uh, uh, batch of chickens and a garden and an orchard. The orchard consists of blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, apple and peach trees, uh, and which are sold down at the road at, at, uh, at the roadside stand. We are just over halfway through the Backroads Farm Tour and on our way to a vineyard that boasts five acres and over 3,000 vines. Welcome to Seven Wells Vineyard and Winery. Okay, we're Seven Wells Winery. We're in Grand Slick, Kentucky. We've uh, got five acres of grapes, we've got about seven different kinds of grapes, and we've got 12 different wines. We, our production is about 7,500 to 8,000 bottles a year. And today we're having a farm tour. We have uh, monthly dinners, music, all kinds of events, weddings, receptions, that kind of thing. And that's about it. Stop number nine on the tour is JT Lumber Custom Sawyer, a portable sawmill run by Jeff Turner. JT Lumber was busy showing off their awesome skills to the crowd, so we were unable to get an interview with them. But here they are nonetheless with the sawmill in action. Set up right next to JT Lumber were representatives from Crail Farm with corn sheller on hand to give you a taste of life on the farm. generation farm. We do corn, soybeans, and hay. We have, um, I don't know, we do a lot of corn and soybeans and today we're doing a demonstration on how we shuck the corn, grind it up, and then we make it into cornmeal. And that's about it. <laughs> Step back in time for stop number 11 as we visit the Campbell County Log Cabin Museum. With hand-built cabins and more tools than your local hardware store, the Campbell County Log Cabin Museum is a wonderful history lesson.
Hi, I'm Ken Reese. I'm the owner of the Campbell County Log Cabin Museum. I started my museum in 1980 by starting out with one cabin. Over the last 30 some years, I have decided to add things to it. People have given me uh, hundreds of artifacts, and I now have a full fledged museum. I've been part of the Kentucky Museum Association for 25 years already. And in a year's time, we usually have about 1,000 visitors. Uh, if you come and visit my museum, you're going to find that I have two reconstructed log cabins. Both of them were built right before or right after the Civil War. I have 47 pieces of horse-drawn farm equipment. I have four antique tractors. I have a uh, seven-ton uh, steam engine, which was ran Gupter's Mill here in our county for 125 years, and I have it functioning again. I have two windmills. I have a covered bridge. And overall, I have a I'm considered an agricultural artifact and local history museum. I have a lot of local history involved here too. Uh, an average visitor can come by my museum anytime they like, any day of the week. Uh, but to get inside the museum, the buildings themselves, I have to be home. And the best way to do that is to call my phone number and, and it's 859-466-0638. Uh, and that will get, uh, get a hold of my cell phone and I can meet you here on a day when I'm not working. Ordinarily, uh, most days I'm, I'm around or Sundays and Mondays, but that's my two days off. Uh, the cabins themselves are both historical buildings that were located other places in Campbell County. When I found that the one, it was in pieces, didn't have enough uh, logs to build the building with, so I had to get another second cabin that was also disassembled, put the two together, and that became my first cabin. That cabin took me from 1980 to 1983 to, to build. In 1983, I had my first open house that year. In 1990, I was notified that was a cabin going to be burned down about three miles from here. And I live in Grand Select here in Campbell County. And I uh, found out that I could get the cabin, but it took me six years to disassemble and rebuild it on my property. So the two cabins ended up being the centerpiece of my museum. I have a lot of other artifacts from all around Campbell County, bricks and and uh, miscellaneous pieces of farm equipment. And the whole uh, purpose of my museum is to educate today's generation about yesterday's Camel County. I invite, welcome everybody to come to my museum and uh, I wish everybody a good day. Our next stop is Greensleeves Farm in Alexandria. Greensleeves Farm is the first in Campbell County to offer a community supported agriculture program. They also grow certified naturally grown produce. I'd like to welcome you to Green Sleeves Farm. Uh, we are unusual in that we are certified naturally grown, which means we use no chemicals on our farm. And we, I like a lot of variety in my life. So we have uh, 30 varieties of tomatoes. You can see them over there. We have 15 or more varieties of garlic that are grown. Uh, even five or six different kinds and colors of potatoes. So you can have red, white, and blue potato salad. So we are a farm that specializes in excellent quality produce, but um, a lot of variety within each type of produce that we grow. And what we really focus on is community. This is a community supported farm through agro uh, CSA, Community Supported Agriculture. And we have members that come and help on the farm every week, which gives them a reduced cost for their produce growth. Also community sponsors folks that are busy and they need to, um, they want our good food, but they help us out by paying a little bit more for that. Uh, we have a lot of fun events. We have weed dating coming up next Sunday, August 4th, and that is like speed dating, but folks come out to the farm and they uh, get their hands a little dirty, but they get to have local beer from Mad Tree Brewing. Chef Stephen Williams, owner of Bouquet Restaurant in Covington, will come out and cook for us and we have live music and it is just a great time and it just adds to the whole community aspect. Um, 
You don't have to be a single, you can come as a couple and just enjoy the evening here on the farm. We're in a great location, 20 miles from Cincinnati, um, easy to find, and we enjoy doing what we have here. Our final stop is a winery located on the ridges overlooking the Licking River Valley. On top of making wine, they keep bees, attract bluebirds, and have a butterfly garden. Here is Generation Hill Vineyard and Winery. Bill Buda and my wife Sherry and I operate Generation Hill Winery. We're operating on uh, my wife's home place with uh, four generations up here. We're both retired, got into the wine business kind of as something to do. We're the smallest winery in Kentucky, but I think we're one of the best. Our wines have won a lot of awards and get a lot of critique. And uh, we're out here today for the Campbell County Farm Tour with a nice turnout, even though it's a bad day. And everybody's having a lot of fun. That concludes the Backroads Farm Tour. We hope you join us next year as we make our rounds in the backcountry of Campbell County. And if you can't make it, you can always catch the action right here on Media Central.